In this lesson, we are going to be adding or subtracting rationals, but these will already have a like denominator. So just like with any other fraction, we know in order to add or subtract fractions, we need a common denominator. So here, as you can see, I have a common denominator of x plus 2 for both of my fractions, which means that I'm really just going to simplify the top by combining 3c plus 4c, which of course gives me 7c. We still, of course, will look at restricting our denominator, but again, the focus is on adding or subtracting the numerators. Again, notice I have 3 minus w and 3 minus w. However, this is a subtraction question, and so with subtraction, you need to be very careful that anything on my second denominator, or second numerator, excuse me, will be subtracted. So some people do like to write this as 5x minus x and write whatever this is in parentheses, which is not a bad idea. And then of course I would keep flip change and that would give me 5x plus negative 1x. And if I combine those together, that gives me 4x. Nothing on the denominator will change. Again, we're not going to focus on the restriction of the domain, but if I were going to restrict it, I again would set it equal to zero as always and solve to get the variable all by itself. And in this case, that would give me three. So W cannot be three, but it could be anything else. Let's try the next one. We have X minus five and X minus five already. So that of course will be my new denominator as well. This is a plus, so I'm not as concerned, but again, good practice to go ahead and write in parentheses. Not necessary for a plus. Six plus x plus two, I would add the six and the two together, which would give me eight plus x over, whoops, x minus five. I, would, I could also write that as x plus eight over x minus five. Please keep in mind that these two x's do not reduce. x is a term it isn't a factor, it isn't being multiplied by everything. So my final answer is x plus eight over x minus five. I can't reduce that to negative eight fifths. Here I have x plus five, x minus two. And again, it's the same for both. So that of course will be my new denominator as well. This is a plus, so I don't have to worry too much about rewriting it. I'm just going to combine like terms. I have x squared. I've got a 3x and a 4x, which together make 7x. And I've got a minus 2 and a plus 12, which together make plus 10. And then, of course, we're always going to simplify our results. So when I get to the end, if I see a polynomial like this one, that immediately says to me, hey, I bet I can factor because I've got an x squared. So if I factor numbers that multiply to 10 that add to seven, that would be x plus two, x plus five, oops, over the denominator I already had, which is x plus five, x minus two, and then my x plus fives will cancel, which leaves me just with x plus two over x minus two. Again, my x's won't cancel, my twos won't cancel, this is as far as I can go. When you restrict, remember you restrict from the beginning, don't restrict after you've reduced. Here again, I've got a common denominator already of x squared plus seven x plus 12. I will end up factoring that in just a little bit, but for now we'll just keep it just like that. This is a minus question, so this is where we have to be very careful. I'm subtracting everything here, so if you would like, Go ahead and rewrite it as all of this is the numerator. I'm too lazy to do that, frankly. So what I do is I change this to plus, and then I change every single sign after it. And then I combine like terms just as I did on the last question. So I have an x squared and a minus x squared. That cancels to zero. I've got a minus two and a plus four, which cancels to plus two or reduces to plus two x. And I've got a plus three and now a plus five, which gives me plus eight. And then of course I always want to simplify. So if I look at my numerator, it looks like I can take out a two. So I have two times the quantity of x plus four. 
My denominator, if I look for numbers that multiply to 12 that add to 7, that would be 3 and 4. So x plus 3, x plus 4. And we can see that those 4s cancel, which gives me 2 over x plus 3, and that's my final answer. Try this one on your own, then press play to see how you did. Here I have a common denominator of x minus 4. It is a subtraction question, so I have to be very careful. I'm going to change that to plus and change every other sign after it, which gives me no like terms here, but I have x squared minus x minus 12. I always see if I can simplify, which means let's factor now. So remember, with multiplication division, we factored immediately. With addition subtraction, we did not. We wait till the end. So I'm going to factor this into numbers that multiply to 12 that have a difference of negative 1, which would be x minus 4 and x plus 3. Negative 4 and positive 3 have a difference of negative 1, but multiply to negative 12. Those x minus 4s now cancel, and that gives me x plus 3 as my results.